Good morning. Good morning. Hey, <laughs> another Saturday morning live. And we've all got a week under our belts. We are all a week better. <clears throat> At least a week older. Hey, Juzer. Good to see you, Juzer, baby. Woohoo. All right. Bella Glavis up. Hello, hello. All right. I was saying uh tough week for me personally on the uh on the chess work. Wow, it's all good though. So this morning I well this last week actually, and it's not like uh it's so interesting how people say, yeah, you have to work on your openings. Yes, you have to practice your openings. But don't focus exclusively on openings because there's other stuff that's more important, etc. And yet so many of us just get beat in the opening. So I want to show some Sicilian ideas. Now, the Sicilian, we're all going to run across the Sicilian. Every one of us. Welcome to all those new viewers who show up, uh, I very much appreciate your patronage and support. And I appreciate your comments. I appreciate you saying, hey, uh, I've had one person say, you know, your long videos are awesome and all, but can you also do some shorter, maybe half hour long videos? And yes, I can. Those of you who want long ones, I'm going to do long ones. Those of you who need the shorter ones, I'll be happy to do so just to let you know. I accommodate to my audience, uh, that would be you. Let's take a look at a Sicilian. This is going to be typical Sicilian. You're going to develop your minor pieces. The reason you open, it's interesting because you bump the king pawn and then you move the knight, but the king pawn is what opens up the bishop and the queen. So what in tarnation are we moving the knight for? Because knights before bishops is a generalization that we're going to stick with. So in this instance, he's going to bump the king three. So, and you go, well, that's an odd move because in a way, I mean, it's typical though. It doesn't come all the way out into the center and yet it is given support to the center. Do you see what square? Of course, this one. This one's the one being challenged, the D5. Well, he wants to challenge the D5 and in fact, the idea is preparing to push the queen four pawn also, right? But useful pawn move. No pieces yet, but it does open up the dark squared bishop somewhat after this guy gets out of the way, and it does open up his queen. So, and that's the, I, you know, I say it every video. I don't mean to keep repeating myself, but that's what happens. You open up the center pawns, and you give your, Long range pieces a chance to get out because the knight can just simply hop over. We know all that. We know all that. Show us the game. Show us the game. White in the Sicilian, and this is so typical. Let's just go right for it. Boom. Bam. Hit it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get this road on the show. And black says, Oh, I'm 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 happy. And so, with the Sicilian, you want to retake that pawn with your knight. And I know you're saying, yeah, but you say don't move a piece twice in the opening. I get it. I get it. But this little baby has been worked through for a long time by millions of grandmasters, international masters, masters, all kinds of people. Trust me, just for now. I don't want to get into all the sloppy details, but you do want to retake with the knight. That's one option, as opposed to, let's say, and I know you're saying, okay, but can we avoid moving a an opening piece twice in the opening if we retake it with the queen? And then you have two pieces developed. True. That is entirely legit. I get it. However, you start running into stuff like this. So <laughs> you're going to end up moving your queen all over the place. And then you say, well, not if I just put her straight back. <laughs> okay, good argument. But why go up and then straight back? Remember, every move's a temple, right? And in... 
in the opening, we want to do this fast. We want to go pronto, pronto, underlay, underlay, baby. So if you do this and then just go back, then he gets to go there. And he is ahead of you in development. In the uh, in the opening, that's critical. So just just realize that sincerely, this is the way to do it. Take it with your knight. Be happy at this point. So fawn queen rook three. Uh, interesting idea. Pawn king knight three. Uh, interesting flank. The Inketo bishops, perhaps. Uh, Rick Tapke, hey. Oh, thank you. The <laughs> I'm so with you, Rick. Either Bugs Bunny or X Men. Yeah. <laughs> Ocean going, hey. Oh, awesome. And Diablo, hi, Professor. Well, Ocean going, I am still working on it, and I I am going to. Life has gotten in the way periodically. You know, life happens when you're making plans. And, yeah, that makes me sound like I'm full of excuses. But for the next four years, I'm going to seriously work on my chest. So that's that's my answer at this point. And, yeah, stick with me. We're going places together. And besides, it's a boatload of fun, right? So pawn, queen, rook, three here. I'm going to mark this. Pawn, king, knight, three. Kind of interesting. Pawn, queen, bishop, four would have also been a really good, strong move for white to do here. You see why. Once again, owning the d5. So, but he's opted to be in kettle, which is, it's decent because you really do end up getting the long diagonal. So queen's going to come to bishop two. So again, now this doesn't put the queen way out here in the middle to relentlessly get attacked and flirted with, right? However, it is an early queen move. And we really need to focus as we can on getting the minor pieces developed first. I'm not going to belabor that to death, but really seriously, we see over and over again, and we will see many instances this morning where if you're not getting your pieces developed speedily, you get hurt. And maybe that's the clue for me. Maybe that's why I'm having such a tough time other than I suck. <laughs> At this game, no, not really, but it's fun. I'm seeing progress. Look, I I bump back and forth between level three and level four on Lee Chess computer, right? On on Stockfish, and I've got I've got level three pretty much in the bag, eighty to ninety percent win rate, pretty good. So that got boring. So I bump up to level four and I get get backhanded. Whoa! And then I get. Boom, bopped on the note. Pow. Oh, wow. This chess computer's beating the tar out of me. So, but on a good day, I can get four for 10. And that makes for happy moments for me. I know most of you are way past level four. I get it. It's good. I'm catching up to you. And I will catch up to you this year. That's my determination. But uh, and then on to level five and six and seven and eight, nine and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, all the way up to three thousand nine hundred and seventy-five. Yeah, baby. Whatever. Hey, we can dream. We dream big here at the BYP organization, right? <laughs> Back to reality, you guys. Got the Fianchetto, Knight Queen Bishop three. Well, okay. Uh, the queen does give support to the knight so that the pawn structure doesn't get damaged if the white knight decides to take the knight. All right, good. And not only that, but I mean, look at look at this particular queen move. You got to keep that in mind because if you castle kingside, now he has bumped for the fianchetto, and the the white squared bishop 
does make up for the defect of the weak white squares because you push the pawn. Okay, so all good, all good. And he does castle. He castles, and this is a very good move for him to do. And the black knight will take the knight. So he wants to exchange one of the central pieces. And this enhances the white player, entices, I meant, the white player to say, hey, I can't just lose a piece, so the best piece to retake the knight with is my queen because it's the only piece that can take that knight at this point. So the queens are out. And this is interesting. Whites is a little bit further out. Is there anything that black can do to get an edge on this? Yes! The pawn, the pawn, take the pawn, free pawn. Yeah, baby. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, not so good. When this happened, one, the, the rook is covering the bishop. Now, notice who's castled and who's not. Yeah? Notice who's more developed and who's not. This is stuff you always... It takes just a second, but the more we play, the more we see games where where a player will make the mistake of not developing or the player will make the mistake of putting off castling, etc. The more of these we see, we acquire the general knowledge and we get better at this, right? So this is the idea. I want to say hi to everybody. Hey, John Cordisco, good to see you, buddy. I know you've tried to play me a couple of times. I appreciate it. Uh, during the week is very difficult, but I love you, brother. You're awesome. Diablo. Yeah, I will. I will, Diablo. Um, mostly Lee Chess. Uh, I haven't played out in public just recently uh, for a while. I'm playing several games behind the scenes with friends at this point, and I'm in the process of learning and all that. I work full time, so it's kind of tough to do because I want to really get good at chess. So I spend my evenings rather than playing social chess, I spend my evenings studying. So I'm not trying to be antisocial, I promise. I will get up there into the social fun and give and take of it all as I have time, yes. But I am working, I'm getting closer to retirement so that I can do this full time too. So woohoo, there's hope on the horizon. Well, the knight, the queen takes the knight, the queen takes the bishop, and the knight to bishop three. Now what this is doing is it cuts off the queen's retreat. So that looks scary. Ah, oh, come on. If that didn't scare you, you're not awake during this game. That does look scary. But that doesn't mean you have to just collapse. Because now if you cut off her escape, she's stuck down here. And again, notice... Just the single queen, there is no support system of a knight or a bishop or even a pawn or a rook or anything. It's just her all by herself amidst the enemies. That can't be good for black. That just can't. That can't work. And so he's going to bring out another piece, and he's going to go ahead... What a great battery. Why not? Look, you're castled. Put the rook to work. The rook queen battery on a partial open file toward the king. True, at this point, it's covered by the bishop. It's all good. But set it up for future function, attack, etc. And that always works. Yeah, really cool. So now we're getting places here. And yes, the knight's going to hit the queen. Target, like I always love to say from Silman. True, this is this is good. Yes, it's a double move. Look, and, and he still, he hasn't put any of his bishops into this yet. But he is trying to generate some oomph because I do believe 
he recognizes, hey, uh, she's lonely down here. She's probably up on the phone saying, hey, this is Queen to headquarters. Would you please send some people so I can have a good time down here? I'm all by myself. I wandered and now I'm stuck, right? So here we go. In the meantime, if you can get another piece down there to the Queen and attack your opponent, that good, do it, do it. However. This is a simple solution. Now, notice you don't go all the way back to the, ba to the base. No, keep her out in the field, just dodge behind the pond. That's not a big deal, you know. You don't have to stay there and let the lady get taken, right? So this is, this is all good. And knight to king four. Notice that is the third knight move, however. No, this still again. And I get it. White has also been moving around the queen a bit and stuff like that. Uh, but he does have the fiend kettled bishop. And he does have the rook on the semi-open file. So white's development is still better. And that's a temporary thing, right? We know that the development is uh if you if you goof off and wait too long, then your opponent will catch up with you. And so while you're ahead is the time to strike. That's when they call the proverbial iron is in the fire. It's hot. It's ready to strike. So let's see what happens. Rook to D2. Hit the queen. Well, yeah, why not? That's a, She's right there. She's in your territory. You certainly don't want to play the whole game and leave the opponent's queen in your camp. <laughs> So hit her. Yeah. Now, remember, you've cut off her retreat with that knight. That's not bad. Not bad. Well, here comes the gallant knight once again. Now, so because he did make those knight moves, he now makes the option, well, okay, I'm not going to just lose my queen. Now he's put himself in a position to where what do you want? What do you think? Do you want to trade queens? Is that what you want? You want to trade the queens? And he says, Oh, heaven, yes, I'll trade the queen and watch the effect of this because black has moved pieces more than once. When you take those pieces, especially in your own camp, it eliminates the active pieces and the developed pieces. And it looks like black just sat down and began to play the game. There's nothing out here yet. White is full going. That's why this exchange is so nice. Not bad, man. I would like that. I would like that. Knight takes the queen. So you did get exchanged the queen. And now watch this, not the pawn because that'll double up your pawns. Now, they're center pawns. I get that, and, and it does cover the center. But if you don't have to exchange with the pawn, don't do it with the bishop. A, again, the final piece to develop, you've got really decent development with really good central uh, squares. Why not do it with the bishop? and enhance your development. Besides, you want a piece. So once again, and I did a video earlier this week, uh, Thursday, I think it was, solid chess, solid tactics with the uh, national master, Robert Ramirez, where he showed that when you, when you play solid chess, that is you develop your pieces, when you, Con convince yourself to support, give strength and power, and use the center. And I use the analogy, pretend like the center is the Star Wars force. Use the force, Luke. Go to the center, and your power will radiate outward over the rest of the board. Okay, all good. So solid chess is going to help solid tactics just pop out. And that's what we saw. He's a piece up. Not only is he a piece up, 
but his pawn gives him more space and it's a one game because black by the time see he still yes this bishop is open for business but this one isn't so black still has another pawn move before he can get his bishop out and it might not be that good in the center because of this guy so he's going to have to be in keto which will give an opposing bishop and that's not bad i'm not complaining but he still has another pawn move and then a peace move a peace move and a peace move and he still has some he's five moves away from being fully ready to attack. White is already in the field. By the time this game's over, this game's over and this guy won't make it, is what I'm showing you. So, so that's one of the uh, the ideas. Hey, Bear Bait, good to see you. Okay, thank you, Juzer. Good to see you, my friend. All right, so let's set this up and do another one. Uh, these games are always useful, especially with the popular openings. Um, I mean, you don't want to play four tricks. I say that every time, but I mean it every time. You do want to, to keep uh, solid uh, chess principles in mind when you're playing, which is easier said than done. And that's why we keep repeating. That's why we keep doing more and more of these kind of uh, – what is a chess opening trap? And there's so many of them. A lot of them can be classified as pretty much the same kind of thing, but it's only through the repeating and the keep repeating and the keep, keep, keep repeating that you make any progress. And man, I hope we're making progress. This next one is really, truly inspiring. Hey, Karan Arsani, how are you, my friend? Welcome, welcome. We just got through one game. We're going to do another in the – today I'm going to focus on the uh, Sicilian defense. It's it's one we've all played with black and white pieces. We will continue to do so. It's a very popular uh, opening. I have quite a few books on the Sicilian. I heard a few years back that the Sicilian has been fundamentally refuted it is not the game to play, the game opening to play as black. Do not do it if you're on the Grandmaster level. But ain't none of us there. So this is a great opening to learn, right? So, I mean, we're not up there at 25, 26, 2700. So this is usable for us. It's all good. Don't sweat it. Let's learn what we can at this because... This can give us solid chess, which enhances the solid tactics that's going to come out of playing solid chess. So it's all good for the next five years, at least minimum, this opening is going to serve us very well. So let's learn it. Yeah, yeah, that's not a problem at all. Pawn King 3, again, same opening as we saw with the uh, last game and the same response, they are, this uh, does enhance the D5 square. So you are gonna wanna put your pawn queen four right there and the pawn is going to take the pawn. This is standard stuff. You do want to retake the pawn with your knight. Uh, standard stuff again. And so black. At this point. Now, the idea, of course, and, and this is what you and I do in every chess game we do. <laughs> we want to have the initiative. And so, what better way? I ask you, what better way, really? Develop a piece and attack. Not just any pawn. That is a central pawn. That pawn is hitting d5 and f5. That would be a great pawn to attack. And sure enough, black does it. The insolence of that knight is unbelievable. So what are we going to do about that? 
we are going to beautiful develop our peace and support the pawn. So take that black. And black says, huh, you think that bothers me? Watch this. Special knife five. Uh, but so here we want to we want to perk up because this is not the best move for black. Now, white can begin to generate some very interesting responses to this in a very, very interesting way. Hey, it's Osaka Kajiro. Oh, from New Zealand. Welcome from New Zealand. Wow, that's awesome. All the way across the world. Fantastic. Great to have you. Love it. I'm loving it, man. So, Bishop Knight 5. So what should black do? Well, it is a gentle move. I get it. It's it's not a it's not a rigorous attack move, but it does solidify the central pawns. And it is enhanced with the knight here, helping this little squirt guard this pawn. The d5, that's the argument. Yeah. So this does not enhance the argument for the center directly. But look, uh, black is, it's an absolute pin, you say, which you're right. And White is hitting the D5, so why isn't that as effective? That's the question we want to look at. Yeah. So when we see our opponent in the Sicilian, now he's brought the knight, he's barely bumped the pawns. When we see him begin to bring out a bishop in somewhat of an attack mode, a correct reason, and there's a number of things we can do. But the thing I've seen the most in the Sicilian, at least from Irving Chernev, that's the book I'm using. It's an older book, Winning Chess Traps by Irving Chernev. I've had a few people ask me, what book are you using? That's the book. When you see him do something like this, you bring up your bishop to queen three. Num two, a couple of things happen. One, you prepare to castle, which is what you want to do. Look, he's knocking at the door. And that's not why you want to castle. Sometimes it is because, of course, the knight is covered. If you're good, it's not like you have to break out into a cold sweat of total paralyzing fear. You can also bump your bishop up if he takes the knight. Right now, that's not the way to do it, though. You would always want to retake with the pawn. Don't give him two pieces for his one. Makes sense, right? So it's not, and yet you do develop, and on a wonderful central square, supporting your pawn from the knight twice. Okay? So that's a great response to the bishop knight five. And so don't be shocked. Don't be surprised if all of a sudden, kablam, beer. He shoots right for the center. Of course he's going to shoot for the center. Fundamentally so. Absolutely so. And you had better do something about that because your center is under attack. What do you do? One of my favorite, and, and this is what you have to practice, right? I, I mean, it's easy to talk. It's easy to say. But one of my favorite things, or it's becoming one of my favorite things, when I can see it in my games is ignore the threat. Carry out your own counterattack. And that's what makes this particular opening strategy of white so wonderful. Now, don't retake the pawn. I get it. It's a strong central pawn. And look. You mean you're going to let him have that strong central 
Pawn chain? Absolutely. Do you see why? With the benefit, and it is a benefit, of a really excellent strong pawn chain, we have the issue that we have in the French opening as well now. The pawn chain cuts off the light squared bishop. All he can do is go to there. None of this is available to him. So, yeah, leave it and hit the knight. Let's see what happens. Well, the knight, of course, is going to move and go to queen two. And he turns the tables. So the knight retreats, and now he's hitting your pawn. And your pawn is blocked. So what in the name of Ninja Turtles did that accomplish? Well, it used to be here. I was hitting this square and this square. It was somewhat protecting the flank. And now it's here. And it is no longer protecting these squares. That's a really important change to keep in mind. Every time a piece moves, the board position changes and the dynamics and the influence of strong squares and weak squares can change. It can also change whether a piece is protected anymore or not, or if it becomes overprotected, etc. So a lot has changed here. Let's keep watching and see what happens when we see the astonishing queen to knight four move. Now you see the difference, don't you? Big time. It used to be there. That move simply wasn't available. Now that it's here, that fantastic developing attacking move, because he is hitting the, uh, the G7 pawn up here, right? He's also keeping his eye on the pawn chain. Yeah. Okay. But observe one other thing. The bishops have fabulous diagonals as well. Also remember one other thing, and this is just general chess. Not every, everybody, everybody knows this. The issue is some of us are not really good yet. We're working on it, but we're not really good yet at exploiting the automatic setup weakness in the opening where this F7 pawn, this side, this diagonal, this side with this pawn, is the weak spot in black in the position. Only the king is protecting that pawn. So it makes sense because I know, see, it goes against the general rule. You're saying, all right, but man, just a couple of minutes ago, now you're contradicting yourself again because just a couple of minutes ago, you motor mouth, you said it was more important to develop all the pieces before you put the queen out there too early. And now all of a sudden you keep pushing pawns and now you're putting the queen out before you're putting the pieces out. See, isn't that the magnificence? Isn't that the mystery of chess? <laughs> when do you keep the rule and when do you break the rule? Are we breaking the rule or are we bending it? Because by producing that queen move, we keep another chess rule. Okay, yeah, he's not fully developed, so we're breaking that rule. But we are keeping another rule of activate your pieces stronger. So are you willing to break that rule and instead do something like this to break a pin that really seriously has no use just to keep the rule? Of course not. Which position do you think is stronger? Sincerely. This one, he broke the pin and he develops a piece. 
I agree. I'm not mocking the move. But this just has more activity. Uh, from my point of view, this is a more active approach. Yeah, and it gives you target. So what that means is, if Black is on his tip 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 tiptoes, he's going to have to respond to White's move here, somehow protecting this pawn. Here, here, if you would do that, Black doesn't have to respond to that at all. There is no attack. That's a defensive maneuver. But the pen is not a big deal, so that's almost a waste of time. Now, Black can do something much more useful and stronger because he's not forced to respond to that move. Man, now he can get it going. He can start galloping the knights out here. Get it? Galloping? Yeah, okay. Anyway, yeah. Or possibly better yet, since the light squared bishop is going to be the bad bishop, of course, why not bump a pawn and prepare to get him out and, and grab the long diagonal, make it so that we can open this up? See the difference? So that's the issue here. Yes, absolutely. We are thrilled to death to break that rule to get that kind of a position. Let's see what Black does. Sorry, I didn't mean to elaborate. Well, I lie. I did mean to elaborate on that because that is critical. Every rule needs to be applied in chess, but there are no specific unbending guidelines of when to apply those rules. So you get something that looks contradictory, and it's not. If that is contradictory to the rule, it's more powerful, so do it. <laughs> Who cares about the rule? Look at the position. Let's see what Black does. Let's see what Black does. Here's the reason I made a big deal about this. Would it bother you? Would it scare you? Would you go, oh, no, I've made a mistake. If he takes the knight now and goes, check, he's attacking my king. BYP, I told you, you should have blocked here earlier so that he would not attack my king. Calm down. Yes, he's attacking your king. Who gives a flying flip? Take the bishop. Yes, but that gives me double pawns. Who cares? It's not a big deal. Keep the double pawns. It's all good. So now Black recognizes. Okay, now that I got this little skirmish out of the way. So he gave up the bishop pair. That's one thing to look at. That's another potential. Now, it's not always a downside, but it's a potential downside to swap a bishop for a knight because the bishops get stronger toward the closer you get to the end game. So he's given up the bishop pair. And his other bishop is the bad bishop. Now, that's something worth noticing. How can we take advantage of our advantage? Because the double bishop is our advantage. There's no question about that. What do we do here? He moves his king. So, okay. No castling for black. No castling for you, chump. No way. However, he does guard the b-pawn. He chose to move the king to guard the king-pawn. If your opponent would do this, and I, I don't know, that's not a good move. It's really not a good move. Let's see the effects of this, though. Bishop Rook 3 check. So we have broken the rule of developing the bishops first before the queen with sensational effect. 
with extra power hitting the G pawn because he chose to move the king over here. Not the right way to do that, but sometimes this happens. So it's nice to know what options are available for us. And look at the options. Once again, okay, you broke the rule, but hot dog, look at it this way. What a fantastic way to develop with tempo. Look at that spectacular diagonal. Man, that, that is gold. So you broke the rule. Who cares? Your position now is phenomenal. King goes to night one. And again, and I love pointing this out because once it clicks, you go, holy shish kebab. The BYP is right. It always happens that way. He is in effect. Yes, the rook is on the board. I get that. He's playing down a rook. Now, look, your psychology is such that were you to have been able to take the rook with, say, a bishop or a knight or whatever, and you were up a rook, you would be really tootin' happy right now. You would be, yeah, I've got this. This is my game. Then have that same approach because the king moving over there, that rook is never going to get into this game. It happens 99% of the time. Why? Because you have the initiative. Did you notice you have the initiative? You put your queen where you want your queen. Do you think Black has put his queen where he wants her? Criminy, he hasn't even had time to move her. So you have the initiative. You were able to put your rook where you want it. And with tempo, an attacking move against the most powerful piece. And Black had to move his king again. Do you really think that's where he wants his king in relation to the rook? Of course not. You have the initiative. That's the point. So this is your game, baby. Yeah. What else? What else? Bishop rook three, king knight one. So at this point... At I say this out loud for me. This is another reason why I really enjoy uh, looking at chess traps in openings. And, and you don't want to get to where that's all you use the opening for is to find traps. You do want to understand the deeper points of weak squares, weak points, uh, strategy on where to put your pieces so they're on the most active squares, etc. And that takes effort. That takes time to do. You do want to play chess that way, but be aware of potential traps or issues that arise because of the position. And this is what takes practice. You have to uh, develop an eye. You have to you have to get your brain used to thinking like chess masters and grandmasters. And this is a process. It takes time. We're going to miss hundreds of these. But from the solid position, and this is why I made that video on Thursday. You'll want to go watch that. Three excellent games from National Master Robert Ramirez on the theme of Solid chess, which is what we're seeing white do. Look at the development. Central power, that's what we're seeing white do. From solid chess, solid tactics show up. Black has barely started. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So, what tactic? This is why. When you recognize how to read the board, you say, well, I mean, his knight isn't out. His bishop isn't out. His knight is out, but just barely. His queen hasn't moved. His central pawns have locked in his pieces. And 
His rook is never going to make it out. So all of my pieces are out on very good octave squares. You can afford to do some tactics. You see the mindset? Okay, so in looking at this, is that going to be a tactic? No. But, I mean, don't don't mock it. It's a developing move. The rook is better here than here, although that's the wrong square to put the rook. I'm not saying that's where to put him, but that's not a tactic. All right, well, attack the queen. It's an attacking move, but it's not coordinated with other pieces, so... That's not really how you want to do this. But you want to look at all your options. That's what I'm trying to get across. You want to do this mentally in your mind, of course. You're not going to sit there during a tournament or during play and start moving pieces around. You're going to get backhanded. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's attacking, but that's not the My point is, look at all the pieces. Now, a real, an honest, a good option is to castle. Because that'll bring the rook out. Okay, so we know that. that That's automatic. However, once again, I know we're going to bend a rule in order to get a stronger effect than if we just strictly kept to the rules that within the first 10 moves, you have to castle. And that is a rule you do want to pay attention to. I'm not joking. Castling by the 10th move. You can't go wrong. Well, we're on the 10th move. Does he castle? No. What he does instead is he takes the E6 pawn with the knight. He has a fabulous bishop. Black doesn't. He has a second remarkably fabulous bishop hitting a critical pawn. Black doesn't even have the bishop pair. He has a very active knight. Black doesn't. His queen is astonishingly well placed. Black's hasn't moved. Of course, you can sacrifice a piece now to open up the king. Pawn Reed takes the knight. Mate. I want to replay this because you can, when you see the dynamic repeated, it can get very exciting. Seriously. Seriously. With the pawn chain is very strong because each pawn supports each other. The queen knows that square is not available for the king. The king is literally trapped. That's what you want to see. The king can't move. All you have to do is put him in check and it's game over. Right? How do you get to that point? You can't do it here because the pawn will take the queen. This pawn needs to move. So sacrifice your piece so that this pawn moves. The position changes, which means the dynamic of the power of the pieces and the squares change. And now that square is available to checkmate the king. That's how to look for tactics. So fun stuff. Really, seriously, that's fun. I, I love, I love stuff like that. I can't help it. I'm. I'm a sucker for cool stuff like that.
Okay, so let's take a look at another one. Hey, welcome, everybody. I want to welcome all you new guys. Hey, Oscars, how you doing? Muslim man, nice. Oh, thank you. Good. Good to see you, Osher. Yes, they are. Grandmaster Daniel King on Chess Base India. They're really good channels for chess. Yes, sir. You're right. Yeah. Okay, so, so the fun thing here, let's reset and we will get to see more how... Well, what we're looking for is how to get an advantage, right? I mean, everybody wants to get an advantage in chess. Otherwise, you're not going to play very good. <laughs> I mean, duh, <laughs> right? So hang on. Let me wet my whistle. This this next one is fun as well. Pawn king four, pawn queen bishop four, knight king bishop three. Pawn king three. Again, they're going to prepare for fighting over d5. And white is going to hit quick. And black will take. And this is so typical Sicilian, right? And you do want to retake with the knight. So we're in a really good Sicilian. And the knight is going to come out. So, so now it's time to attack the pawn. We saw this exact same opening in the previous. And, of course, the best way to support the pawn. Now, Okay, look. Why don't you do this? It's the same effect. It protects the pawn. No, it's not the same effect. Yes, it protects the pawn. But this is fundamentally different than protecting it here. Please tell me you can see why. Because this guy is supporting this one and this one, and he's hitting on the edge. There's more power to the piece than there is the pawn, right? That's why we do it this way. Much better, much better. Okay, so we got that straightened out. Knight, king, bishop, three, knight, queen, bishop, three. And again, this bishop, knight, five. Now, this is going to be a theme, and so it's kind of nice to see when we can exploit it and make this into a weakness. That's kind of fun to be able to do, isn't it? That's why we study opening traps. Is that move a good move? Well, look, there's a lot of people who say, well, dang it, man, he's getting ready to attack my king. We all get that. So how can we use this for our benefit? Remember, don't immediately react to the threat. You've got it covered. Stay calm and develop. Get another piece out, which also gives you the option to castle. We're early in the game. Castling is always good. So that is why that move is fine. You notice you don't address this. You don't say, you can, you have an option here. You always have options in chess. You can say, ha, take that, make up your mind. And in some setups, this is okay. This is okay. It's not a mistake. All right. But it's not the best. Put the best in when you have a chance. Rather than move a pawn, if you're able to move a piece, move the piece. It is a much stronger way to play chess. So we've got that figured out. And here comes another knight challenging our central knight. Why not? He's not. I mean, he's hanging. He's not defended. That makes sense. And so, and you can't defend him, but, and here's another issue that I've actually seen in some games. You say, well, okay, then I'll put him back here to safety. That's passive. And, and there are times when you have to do that. I, I get that. There are times when you cannot 
ignore your opponent's threats. This is one of those times. So the choice is between do we play passive or do we play more active, energetic? Do we seek to grab the initiative? Every time you can grab the initiative, it's bonus. So this is doable. It's doable. That's good. We're going to do like Lasker says. Sit on our hands. We see a good move. Sit on our hands and let's find a better move. There is a better move here when this night develops to challenge our night, and that is to exchange that night. This is stronger. And the night pawn will take in response. So now we ask, okay, now what do we do? Attack the knight. Knight will come to queen four. Now this wonderful move, queen knight four. And you say, dang it, man, it's the same thing from last time. It is. So I don't have to elaborate why this works. And it's not critical against you because you broke the rules of development in the move order. This time, though, he defends this way. Rather than moving the king, he bumped. this person bumps the pawn. So when they bump the pawn, now is a good time to castle. Because, look, there are pieces on outpost, by the way. That's not bad. Centralized knight on outpost. And, and the pieces are coming out. And they have the ability to keep coming out more and more and more. Good time to castle. So castle. Absolutely. See, we're on move what? Right on time. We're on move 10 right here. So go ahead and castle. You're never, it's good to castle here. And so now, see, too many pawn moves. That's the problem here. Too many pawn moves as opposed to pieces. I agree, though, it is a weaker piece attacking a very, very strong piece so that you do have to respond to that. That's true. But not only are you loosening up this whole side with a whole bunch of weaknesses, remember, every time you push a pawn, you leave weaknesses. It is true you can attack that queen, but in the process, the squares behind you are weak. Besides, you can pawn, you can on passant take that pawn. And now look at the issue. Now you have to take the bishop takes the knight. You're stuck taking the bishop take the knight. Ignore that. I mean, it's not a check. He lost the pin when he castled, right? So again, this is simply a non-issue. But he took a piece of ours, BYP. He took a piece of ours. We have to retake, don't we? No, you don't. Now, you do want to look at the option. You do want to do a little calculation to see the effects if you retake and then his knight retakes, etc., is he going to completely trash your queen side? Or do you just want to do something really magnificent and take the pawn and go check with a spectacular forcing move? That's the question. That's a much better much more powerful response than retaking that guy. And even if even if he retakes it with the knight, the knight isn't hitting any of your pieces anyway either. So who cares? You see how if you can trim off the distractions to your plan and you continue on making your strong forcing moves, check to the king, what are you going to do to get out of this? You go, PYP, that's crazy. Why give up your bishop? I mean, now you're way behind in material. That is true. But the really cool thing is you're ahead by checkmating him. Right? And you go, never thought of that. 
That's not checkmate. No, but that is. Oh, no, it's not. Wait a minute. I did this wrong. What did I do wrong? Oh, no, 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 no. No, yeah, yeah, you do check him. You do check him. Sorry. And he goes there. How did that work? Then you check him. And he goes there. Then you take the rook. There you go. Then you take the rook. And then he has to come up. And then you've got him checkmate. No, that's still not checkmate. Doggone it. How did he do that? I can't. Anyway, there's a checkmate. God, you know, that's why I have to practice in order on chess. Bishop takes pawn check. Crap, I can't even see the. Queen takes the knight pawn check. Okay, queen takes the knight pawn check. Let's put the rook back. Queen takes the knight pawn check. King goes to bishop. King goes to bishop one. He didn't go to bishop one. Queen takes the knight pawn. Oh, check. King goes to bishop one. There you go. Bishop rook six check. And the rook takes the bishop. Boy, I knew that. See, again, look at all your pieces. Look at all your pieces. Then the rook will take the bishop. And the queen goes to knight seven check. Here we go. Then the king goes to king one. And the queen knight eight is checkmate. There we go. Look, I knew it was in there. <laughs> I got to pay attention to the instructions. No, that's important. Because what was I missing? What was I just now missing because I couldn't find that checkmate? Bring in another piece. Sacrifice yet another piece. You already sacrificed the knight. Now bring your bishop in to do a forcing move and sacrifice your bishop to the rook to get rid of the rook uh, out of the way uh, place-wise so that you can deliver the checkmate. That, that's really important. That's cool to do. Anyway, wow. See, like I say, we've all got work to do. And I am not kidding. I am the one who needs the most work of us all. So woohoo! Fun stuff. Yeah, Asher Z. Uh, Asher's, yes. Bishop H H6. That was the correct move. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm just now seeing that. Yeah, I lost 15 people watching because of that boo-boo I made. <laughs> all right. Cream of the crop. Stay in with me. Okay, here we go. Let's do another one. Uh, I have a, uh, what time is it? 10 o'clock. I'm in good shape. I have a, uh, a recording to do at 11 with a dear friend of mine that we're going to do a program together that will be aired tomorrow night after my live program tomorrow night. So let's do one more and I'll make this particular live just a little bit on the uh, less time consuming side and I'll make up. I'll make it up to you next week, or I will try like crazy to do more videos. I have a chess tournament I'm going to attend next weekend, next Sunday. It's it's among family and friends. We haven't gotten together very much this last year, so we're all going to get together and have a fun round robin, uh, very casual. I don't know if we're even going to be recording anything or not, but I'll let you know how that goes. And if I get good enough games, I'll show them to you. I'll probably get my head caved in, but we shall see. So a lot of stuff going on. I'll see if I can make some shorter videos for you during the week also. Number one, they're easier on me. And number two, they're helpful to so many of you, which is always my pleasure, I, I promise. 10 after 5 in Scotland. Thank you for watching from Scotland. I hope it's a, a pleasant evening there. Okay, let's do another one where, again, now, it's not only white that gets the advantage in the Sicilian, of course. And and next week, when I get back on live here, I will show, there's several more. Oh, boy, I've got a lot more Sicilian defenses. My gosh, I've got 20 more to show you. And there's many places where black uh, wins a queen, black wins the exchange, black has checkmated white, etc. So white is not the only one that gets good 
in the Sicilian. So don't get the mistaken impression that, oh, well, as black, I'll never play the Sicilian because white always has the good stuff. That is not true. It's just that these first several examples show white getting the advantage. This is going to be another one, and then we'll call it good here, and we will pick up in the videos in that time. So pawn, queen, bishop, four, beautiful, excellent, typical Sicilian, pawn, king, three, and now black, pawn, queen, four. The pawn will take the pawn, and the knight will take the pawn, and the knight will come to king, bishop, three, hitting the pawn. We want to protect that pawn, so we develop our knight. Once again, we see this familiar theme of bishop, knight, five, our response is don't sweat the small stuff. Technically, it's not small stuff. If he had extra help with that bishop, with this pin, that would make it worth paying better attention to. But as it is, really, you are vastly better off developing and bring that light squared bishop out. Sincerely, that's a great spot for it. He's going to hit you in the center. You ignore that as well, and you press forward attacking the knight. The knight is going to have, now, and we'll see some games next week where the knight does go to the rim in order to come back to fight to do some kind of a, a tactical variation against white. For now, the response that we get here is this one went this way, and that's our signal. See, this, in the Sicilian, when they play this way, that is one of the signals that we're okay, we're good bringing the queen out. So early in such a powerful developing move. And if your opponent plays super passively, that's all the better. Bishop, Bishop one is not the correct way to play this because now you can immediately strike their center. They, in effect, well, not effect, what they did is they undeveloped their bishop. So you have one tempo getting the bishop out. You have two tempo, putting it back for nothing. But you can't castle now. You can't castle to get out of trouble. That's what makes this move of the knight so good. But why not just take the knight? Because this is in danger. Again, and we've seen this in so many other openings. That queen and knight combination, man, they're tough. So the bishop comes back. It's almost forced. It's really not a good move. It is absolutely not the move that you want to make as black. And now the pawn falls. Well, you do take the knight. And look at this. So you sucked the knight, but it made this pawn move forward. That's an important change of position because it opens the king to another forced move. And you sack the bishop to make the weak square G6, check. So your knight was a forcing move. Your bishop was a forcing move. They're both gone. Your queen gets to make a forcing move. In other words, the queen takes the pawn with tempo because now the king is in check. And the king has to move. And you see it. Bishop, knight, five, check. Another piece into this. Knight can block. You wouldn't want to be black here, would you? <laughs> Holy 
cow. Pawn will take the knight check. King goes to queen two. Get the king out of here, but watch. Pawn takes pawn. Oh, my heavens. Bishop king two challenged the bishop. Pawn takes rook. Queen, look at the king side, you guys. He's obliterated. It's literally empty. But look at the effect of the superior, the solid chess has led to chess tactics. That's a queen. The queen takes the queen, and the queen gets to come to here. And white wins the exchange. And you go, yeah, but you're going to checkmate next. You're going to check. You're going to drive the king further out. So, and you don't have this pawn developed so that you can't use your, you definitely don't want to pull the knight out now. Heavens no, that's your escape route. So is there anything you can do to kind of help out? Well, you do have the bishop supporting, so threaten the queen. And you can exchange the queens. But it's a one end game because of your pawns. Now you're going to castle queenside, put your rook over here, and throw those pawns up there just as fast as you can because you've got the knight and you've got the bishop. Black has nothing. Nothing is out in the field. So that's an easy endgame win. That's how that works. So really cool to see when you play solid chess that solid tactics arise. That, I guess I could say that's this week's theme because I made that great big, I showed three excellent games in the video on Thursday night um, on that. I've got to learn how to do cards so I can throw a link in here, but it's in my brand new, uh, new chess videos only. If you want to look at that, you ought to. It's very good stuff. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to call it good here. Uh, been an hour and 15 minutes. That's long enough for now because I have another appointment and another engagement to work on. I will return. Uh, let me see. I'm not quite sure what I've got going on in the morning. Uh, seems like I have something. So if I don't get a do, if I don't get to do another live on Sunday morning, I'll, I'll try to do a couple of videos. Maybe I'll do a live tomorrow. I don't know. So, hey, Brian J., welcome. Oh, dang it, I'm just in the process of leaving. I apologize. You can watch the video, though. This gets automatically recorded. Uh, but thank you for coming on. Uh, we will do a lot more chess as we can through the course of the week. And uh, I wish all of you guys, yeah, on passant is a good rule to, to check up on. Yes. Yeah. En passant is one you really want to try to take advantage of when you can also. Good point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That makes a difference, right? So anyway, appreciate all of you. Have a great day. Remember, smile. It makes people wonder what you're up to and make lots of friends. Friends are a lot more fun than enemies. So, all righty. I got to scoot out of here. I will catch up to you just as quick as I can. In the meantime, happy chesticizing. Good luck improving your chess and use the BYP videos to help you in that process, among others.